<laughs> All right, so sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Gabor Kramer. I work for the uh, Office of uh, Public Administration and Justice. This is our background organization under the Hungarian uh, Office of the Prime Minister. It's basically just a ministry uh, which has, among others, uh, the public administration uh, area. So, uh, my talk will be a little uh, unusual here because previous and common talks are about successful migrations, but this one won't be. Uh, my role in this project was not to introduce LibreOffice itself in the project, but uh, to create a survey of uh, applications that are used in this organization, which is called Government Office. So, a uh, little overview of my talk. I'll try to be short. Uh, so, it's not a success story. We already know that. Um, but I hope someone will learn from these mistakes. So, government office is an umbrella organization because our current government likes to centralize things and territorial public administration is one of those. So there were 15 plus formerly independent administrative bodies for interaction between the state and the citizens. So they, whenever the law factory says, you need to register your activity with the state, you go to some kind of administrative organization where they register your uh, activity. Uh, I won't read all those, but it's, it's a growing list. Even this year, there are some, some of those new areas added to it. And all of this started in 2011, and currently we have lots of employees and lots of machines. But uh, this uh, organization came from uh, came as a successor of other independent uh, bodies, and so it had a difficult uh, heritage. So we have We have old hardware, old uh, responsibilities, and uh, no centralized services, which is not very good for a newly centralized organization. IT solutions and operation was initially organized on the county level, which we have 20. And so they choose different solutions for, for example, MEA. So like 20 different mailing systems, no central uh, address directory, etc. So the new organization is uh, split between backend, the government office, and front end, government window, which is a new way to do things. And we are not really touching this. Only concentrate on the government office. Uh, also, there were uh, uh, different legal problems with the used software on the desktop computers. Let's not talk about that much. <laughs> so, uh, a project came to life, <coughs> EU funding nominally to improve the infrastructure because 
we inherited the first computers available at the Bristol store uh, organizations. Uh, so not everything was given uh, in terms of uh, responsibilities, and the uh, business or organizations kept to the best hardware for themselves. Uh, so our project came to life to improve the uh, situation all over the place. So the project scope is 18,000 new desktop pieces, new servers, and new about 250 printers, uh, uncountable number of printers, uh, network switches, a of computers, and a lot of other things. Indicator is a very important thing. It's, uh, it is things that we uh, we are obliged to uh, do because that's what we are getting the funds. If we don't get these things done, we have to get pay back the funds. The government doesn't want that to happen. So, in any way, we need to uh, do the indicators. Everything else is optional. That will fight us later. So. What we want also as uh, indicators, centralized uh, management of workstations in the case of 20,000 machines. And uh, as you can see, most of this uh, contract was won by the Novell uh, company or a little uh, uh, partner of them. Called Novell Professional Services Hundred uh, Limited. It's not exactly Novell, but it's their partner. So we are deploying their services. And uh, some of these are uh, included free software also. We'll talk about that later. We are developing new uh, applications to contractors. Uh, these, these are supposed to have uh, customer service and, and whatnot. Uh, so the user experience, basically, for citizens. We also need to train uh, employees in the use of these new applications. And by the way, these new applications are also free software. Not because the project leadership loves them the piece of the concept much, but the uh, European Union loves it. So they require that anything proposed newly or developed newly has to uh, transfer all the rights created. Like use, uh, work and development, and so on and so on. So those are the of the So all these are about the uh, indicators. So how comes free software into the picture? On the servers, we use a uh, Shusha Linux Enterprise server. Uh, I will make a few video videos. Uh, that's another software. Uh, on the client side, we, are, uh, we have planned to deploy uh, Shusha Linux desktop, plus LibreOffice, the, or always the rest one uh, of that, currently 4.4, and also for the Windows uh, machines. Why? Because standing on multiple feet is good, it encourages uh, competition and that should result in uh, cost saving. So that was a basic idea. But all of this is not indicator. So we don't have to present this to the European Union. But we have done this. No, we don't have to do that. So this can be ditched if someone wants to. And uh, if decision makers 
no longer supported. They are active. I will talk later about why this support never created. So, just a few detour, Ilias. It was a successful example of free software uh, deployment uh, because it's an indicator to train uh, about 20,000 people in the use of the new applications that are being deployed and uh, developed. So it must be done. So project management supports that. And uh, it's free software, it's localized, you don't have to pay for it. And there is no need for backwards compatibility because we don't have, we didn't have yet anything like that. So that's a big uh, plus. So, so not, it's things that we don't have to worry about. Also, it's important that there is local expertise for it available because it's somewhat popular among Hungarian higher education. And so there are companies that we could contract to develop education material for the applications and also to provide help with the Ilias server uh, setup. It's a huge software with many options, many settings. You really need someone who can, who knows where to touch it. So it's also a local company. It's able to pa participate in public procurement, which is uh, advertised in Hungarian. So if, for example, Collabora would want to participate in a Hungarian language uh, at, uh, procurement, they would have a hard time just to read the thing. Also, it's uh, possible to have weekly personal meetings where management can, can yell at them that's also important. So, let's look at it for another schlep. Well, someone more famous than me uh, uh, talks about Linux still uh, sucks, and it's true. Also, it's, uh, there are just uh, small things that don't work. Expectation is not big. It just should work like Windows did. Well, file name encoding in zip files is not just like that. Uh, I don't really want to go into that with that, but it doesn't work. It's a small thing, but users complain. What makes users complain makes IT leaders complain and all of it goes just up. Also, PDF viewer in shred cannot check or verify digital signatures. A different project just uh, finished last year. They developed software and a process that digitizes uh, income in here from citizens. They scan it, they digitally sign it, and we cannot do anything about that. But except for installing Adobe uh, uh, Acrobat 9.5, very old, very full of uh, security holes, but that's all we that we have. So it's not very convenient. We have also loads of legacy applications that, that are essential to operate the organization, and they don't run on the line. They, they are supposed to, but they are not. It just doesn't work. Maybe because there is not a really working uh, economy behind the line. Also, some hardware don't, don't work at all, especially printers. But we are buying new printers, those are supposed to work, but others are not. Ah, the this finally. Uh, we started to use LibreOffice the way it was packaged for Shred. That was 4.0, then we upgraded from, with packages from PDF. Uh, a 
also on Windows because we don't have really so much money. But project funding is huge, but uh, tests are also very expensive and numerous. So we have to have to save some there, some money for those tests. And the initial decision was to buy less uh, Windows licenses and buy less uh, Office licenses. But only the user training part uh, for LibreOffice uh, arrived. That, that was initiated and it was done. But nothing else. Like, it was not a priority later on in the project. So, we have many things to do. This, those are indicators, those are priority. This is not. Uh, we have not procured a support contract, for example, from Collabora or anyone else. That, that is a problem. We got documents that are falling uh, apart in LibreOffice. What can I do about that? Nothing. Support uh, company could, but we have not quite hope anything. So there was no assessment of document templates and macros that are used. So we don't really know what are we uh, fighting against. Basically, my job in this project was to assess the applications that were uh, inherited from the other organizations, and it's also a zoo, as uh, Florian said. Uh, but there was no such assessment for documents. Also, convincing the local IT leaders, the county level leaders who are uh, currently responsible for operating the infrastructure of the county, they were not convinced that this is good, this is necessary, and we really should do that. So basically, nothing. Not good. So, another detour, Euro Office. What the hell is that? It's an office product by Multiratio Kft. It's a Hungarian small company. We got two installers from them. One is from a uh, rebranded Apache Open Office. It's really, it was really terrible. We wrote about, I don't know, 20 pages about why it sucks. Later, uh, a little bit later, we got a different version, Euro Office 2050. It was a rebranded uh, LibreOffice 4.3. Plus, the company is specialized in developing custom Office extensions. It was not that terrible, but the added value in the form of these extensions is still minimal, in my opinion. And uh, really, there was no third level support that they are uh, selling. They are just not that competent. Actually, they are not competent at all. As you can see, I won't read that. <laughs> but paid licenses are really necessary for those. Extensions cost about 5 to 10 euros, the base package 35, but somehow they have a good lobby power. Our CPO said that there is government will to use it. I have no idea how did they manage that, but, but the comment came down from upside even to the CPO. So, so they have competences if we have not taken the areas. Yes, in the non-technical areas, they are good. Yeah. I have no idea if it will be procured in the final uh, stages of the project or in the future. I hope it won't. Also, there were some expectations for free software. Free means gratis. Maybe the TDFs should stop this word on the homepage. It really makes life hard for everyone else. It sounds good, but it makes people think unrealistic. Also, 100% interoperability. 
you know, it's just a drop-in replacement for Microsoft Office, isn't it? Well, it's not, but also marketing uh, likes to say big. Also, regressions are um, not very welcome. We could have bought uh, an RTS race from Colabora or someone, but no one asked about why that would be good and why do we have to pay for it. So, really, there was not much consideration given to this part of the project because it's not indicator, so we take care of the indicators and everything as is optional but experience we also started to use it inside the project well mostly the two uh, Linux nerds of, of which one of them uh, is me but management uses Macs because they are Mac fanboys very funny over 40 uh, so we are using different uh, office suits for inside the project and it gives us constant uh, headaches. But switching everything to ODF is not very practical in our experience. <coughs> One of the things is that uh, to work in the system we have hundreds of applications. They are either custom applications that are implementing uh, in the real world what the legislation factory puts out, so they figure out they want to create a new uh, registry of citizens who are doing something like, uh, like buying a car or something. They, they are developing a custom software and, and those software were uh, developed organically. So they were, there were those individual independent uh, organizations and they went for the, uh, in the direction of the uh, smallest uh, opposition, that was Windows, and we need to, do, we, we need to work with those. So, those applications are producing documents and data. Data is stored in the database and the document is uh, given to the citizen. Well, uh, surprisingly, a smaller part of those applications are putting out uh, problematic documents that are falling apart. There is some, but most of them are uh, good in this uh, regard. They just don't run on uh, Linux. So this could have been handled, but was not also. And we also need to interact with the outside world. The government office is uh, an executive body, basically. We are not developing the applications that we use. That's one level higher in the hierarchy. That's, uh, usually done by uh, background institutions uh, behind the individual ministries that are on the same level as the project management organization but not as the same level as the government office they are one level higher so we don't really can give them comments to change these operations answer to that would be why did the minister said so? no, did not so, so, it's a very brave project to uh, install Linux in this, in this level of the public administration, but it has some difficulties. So, one more thing that uh, convincing decision makers could have been made easier with case studies, uh, written case studies uh, from TDF or anyone else. Uh, maybe I wanted to say that later. So, lessons learned. 
<coughs> so you might have not understood completely what happened in this project. Well, the problem was that the political support uh, was only on one person who, who started doing the project. But later on, uh, elections came, government was a little, little bit reorganized, and that person is no longer with us. And political support is no longer with us. That's a problem. We started uh, to think that, why not? Uh, let's see where this project leads us. Well, I saw but, uh, my advice is in such cases, you should really abandon ship. No point uh, to stay after such uh, accident happens. So it's not like, as a free software supporter, it's not enough to convince one person somewhere down in the administration. It's not enough. It's not like uh, you can convince Rambo to fight with you and, uh, and he will solve everything. It doesn't work like that. Uh, another example, uh, if we have time. We have time. Is a different project that went parallel with us. The, the objective of that project was to unify uh, document filing in the government ministries background organizations, government uh, office, everywhere. One solution is enough. But the solution they choose was a thick client for Windows. It doesn't really work on their mind, so our life was just made a little bit worse or harder. Because that's a very good idea, a uh, very good uh, argument against uh, Linux. Like uh, the government says we need to use that client, it doesn't run online, on Linux, there is nothing to do. So, another lesson is that the migration protocol that is uh, created by the Document Foundation is good, it works. Because we did exactly the opposite and it didn't work, so it must be good. But all the mistakes that it says we should not commit, we did. For example, we did not really uh, pay attention to convince local IT, IT leaders and uh, turn them to our side. If we would have done that, they would they, maybe they could have pushed uh, the new leadership to support uh, Linux because they were already with us, but they were not. Also, local IT, uh, they, they need to be paid to do project stuff. It's not very obvious that you have uh, hundreds of uh, IT people on the field, in the organization, and they are terribly underpaid. And if you want them to do something for your project, you need to pay them because they are paid to do their everyday job. Project job is uh, over time. If you don't pay that, you won't get that. Another uh, different, another experience is that uh, employees were surprisingly and unexpectedly open to change. They were uh, sworn to get the education in uh, free software. So, more lessons, interoperability is uh, very important, one of the most important things. Also, a local support company to have on board is also a must. So, we have contracted the Mobile uh, Professional Services uh, Limited. They are very helpful with the, with the deployment of their software. That part of the project is uh, still rocking. They are still uh, on a good track to finish the project 
in before it ends. We did not have that for LibreOffice, and it's still and it's certainly a mistake. Another thing is that we need, as a document foundation, uh, better support for ISVs. Because we have about 700 applications in their use in these huge organizations. And uh, they, are, they are made like from, by a hundred uh, ISVs, small Hungarian companies that are sp uh, specializing in um, developing software for government needs and whatnot. But also uh, applications, from, applications from the open market, like box software. So most of those are doing the basic uh, public administration job. They are storing data about citizens in a certain database. The citizens who are doing one thing is one database, another thing is another database, etc. And they are uh, creating documents that are uh, handed over to citizens. But we cannot, but or at least I, I am not very aware of a way to show them how to make their applications uh, output documents in ODF format. Because current uh, documents are prone to uh, fall apart in LibreOffice. It would be maybe better if we could uh, easily show these companies who are open to such kind of support. Uh, how to create ODF documents that are not uh, falling apart in LibreOffice. So, that's all. Uh, questions? Yes? Uh, not so much a question, but a comment. Um, you said if uh, your only supporter is a dependent chip, um, I, at yes. the Fest there was a talk by uh, somebody from the UK government, and they had a very very clever solution for that. So if you see that there's a political move, movement in your organization, yes. and there's a new head coming, make sure that when he arrives, that you can do some kind of release, some kind of the thing you're working on, make some announcement, and put a quote of the new guy in there that he supports it. And then he's politically tied to the continuing movement. Very clever, very clever, thank you. So they did this when they had a political election, and then the new guy came in. Immediately they said, what's the latest, the latest good thing that happened? Uh, make a nice press release, make it sound neutral, so that you don't mention any hot passwords, but make sure that the, the general strategy is locked in, and get a quote. Okay. And then you're settled. Okay, well, thank you. But at least it helps. Thank you. Uh, anything else? Yes. You mentioned, uh, I think, 700 different uh, software. Uh, is is yes. any of this software open sourced? Well, some of them. Uh, there are some applications that are that were uh, being developed in the last few years from uh, funding of the uh, European Union, and those are uh, basically free software because all the uh, copyright uh, was uh, also uh, procured. So it's not the company software, but the organization's software. So we can, or they can uh, theoretically uh, give the further development to a different company. So it's basically free software, some of them. But most of them is not. They are custom software some organization behind the certain ministry can uh, ask the developer to develop it in a different direction, like adding ODF support or something, but uh, they are not free software. Yeah, it, it also costs money. That's, that's not a problem. It's a political view. That's, that is a problem. Okay. Anything else? Yes? Ah, so what is the current state of that project? Current state. So the project will close 
uh, at the end of October, like a month, and uh, it will uh, probably uh, show that uh, indicators are done and everything else is not. We have we have some we have like one county uh, uh, IT leader uh, on our side. He made uh, shred used on in his in his country and also in the office. The others were not so very uh, eager to change. And some some of the others were also open to change, like two or three. They they deployed a little bit. Most of them were uh, neutral. Uh, like if we see that it works in other countries, we can switch. If this is the word from above, and uh, two or three were actively uh, complaining that it cannot work. So that was about the uh, situation in the, in the counties. So we will have like, uh, I don't know, um, a thousand or so uh, machines running with shred, with LibreOffice. Uh, maybe LibreOffice will be used on some Windows machines, but in this regard, the project is not a success. So, okay. Yes? On the Windows machines, uh, don't you install both? I mean, if you buy the Microsoft, don't you install the LibreOffice as well? In that case, uh, the user have a choice. Uh, I don't think so. They will either buy Microsoft or with, uh, Office or they already have it, then they don't switch to the Office. Uh, it's uh, not a project goal to make uh, the Office installed parallel. It's just not a goal, so it won't happen. It, it would be uh, good, but it won't happen. So yeah, that's, that's where we are. Okay. Well, thank you for your attention.